tell you. Let's have a look at the top 12 after qualifying. On the front row of the grid, from pole position, Leon Bird in the Commodore, a time of 59.95. Alongside him, Greg Crick, a time of 60.26. On the second row of the grid, Martin Sinclair in the Tirana, a time of 60.59. He'll share the second row with Matthew Springer, a time of 60.63. On the third row of the grid, Tony Jory, although I'm not quite sure whether that car will be out there, and he's alongside Wayne Gaffney. The next row of the grid, Stuart Salter, a time of 62.65. He shares that row with Andrew Farr, 65.03. And Stephen Swain alongside Daryl Boyd. And uh, Michael Elliott will round out the 11th driver there, not having 12 in this field, in fact. So this is Burden. It's actually a six-cylinder Commodore, not a V8, as it probably looks like. A little like the old uh, dealer team Group C cars of yesteryear from the touring car ranks. He managed to finish second in the prelim this morning, so he's hopped to trot. The man that he's going to have to worry about is Martin Sinclair. It's the yellow car in the background there, car number 14. He was the winner of the first heat. It's a turbo six-cylinder Tirana, and it flies. Well, the rest of the field gridding up now as we speak. There's Burton's Commodore. Number 36, Greg Crick and the Mazda RX-7 moving up to his position. There's Martin Sinclair in the Tirana. Some wild and wonderful looking machinery, especially this one. Cool. Car number 27, Wayne Gaffney. It's a Corona, believe it or not. Oh, what a feeling. <laughs> well, the field just about set. 41, Andrew Farr in the Tirana. And there's the front row of the grid. Distance is five laps. Crick broke an axle in the preliminary this morning in this Mazda on the left-hand side of screen. Got away quite well. It's one of the peripheral port 13B Mazda engines. And I think the, although I haven't checked, but I think that that Corona that we saw has got a Mazda rotary in it as well because it's a, a bit of a flyer. Five laps the journey, as you said, a total of 12 kilometres around Simmons Plains. We're probably about 15 seconds away from the start of the race. Waiting for the flag to go up. There's the grid. Watch the car on that second row, Martin Sinclair, the winner of the previous event, car number 14. Flag is up and down. And the Mazda is long gone, left bird, as they make the sprint down for the first time to the left-hander. And uh, it's Greg Crick in the Mazda RX-7. But coming up very quickly indeed is Sinclair on the outside. And he's going for the long way round into the first turn. How the Bramble's hairpin for the first time. How fast is this Tirana? We'll find out. Burton comes up on the inside as they exit the turn. But there's Sinclair going after the Mazda. Down towards the Goodyear sweeper. Oh, how easy it is. The thing just about sits up and begs. It flies. Turbo Tirana through to the lead. Martin Sinclair, car number 14. Down to the left-hander. Crick still in second. Burden in third, but only just. He's got plenty of mumbo-jumbo. It's running away from the Mazda and the Commodore as they work the back part of the course coming up to the Mazda hub. And doing it nicely, Martin Sinclair. Greg Crick in second place, Leon Burden in third. Mazda closed up a little through there. Once he gets the, uh, the joystick working, Sinclair just manages to stretch them. There's three that haven't made it. One of those involved look like Michael Elliott's Mazda. There's number 27. It's involved, Wayne Gaffney and the Corona. Well, Oops. Now they have a slight problem there. They certainly do. I think the other car that was on the left-hand side of screen, that car there, the Mazda car 66, is the John Walker Mazda RX-7. That car was campaigned by Graham Moore and Peter McKay at Bathurst as the Ghostbusters car a couple of years ago. It's been given a rebirth. Well, what's happening here? I think there's yellow flags out, and I suspect the burden went through under the yellow there, which is a little bit naughty. Oh, well, it gets your television exposure. The Mazda's coming down for a big lick here on the inside. Great Crick. No, couldn't pull that. So Leon Burden and the Commodore, followed by Greg Crick at this stage, while the officials try and uh, cure the problems of the guardrail gyrations up at the other end of the circuit. Well, we've lost car number 14, Martin Sinclair. When I say lost, he's a long way back in the field, but he's not at the right end. So Burden, the leader, Crick driving up his exhaust pipe, and Matthew Springer comes into the, uh, the ballpark in the green Tirana. Oh, there's everything out there. There's tow yes. trucks, and they've obviously watched the reruns of Bathurst. Up to the left-hander at the hairpin. And this is where the cars collided two laps ago. Coming down under the flags. 
Burden through, Crick is the next one. Then Springer back in third in the Tirana. Through the temporary chicane. Up to the Goodyear sweeper. Another of the Mazdas has died on the left-hand side of the road there. So Burden, I think, has inherited a nice comfortable lead at the moment. Down to Coca-Cola. And Leon Burden in the Commodore, number 12. Leads by probably about two or three car lengths from Greg Crick and the Mazda RX-7 as they work their way up towards Bessent and to Mazda Hummer. Over now. Back down into the left-hander. Brings them up to the start-finishing line. The burden starting to open his gap now. Two laps to go in this five-lapper. Sponsored by Wins and once again up to the Brambles hairpin. Crick acknowledges the yellow flag. There's plenty of them. <laughs> Through the hairpin. We'll see what's happening down there this time. It'd almost be better to just leave them alone for the moment and uh, keep the track free. It's only a sprint race. So the Mazda makes a lunge now at the back of the Commodore. Down towards Coca-Cola corner, left-hander, Mazda really that much closer this time. So Leon Burden and the Commodore, who was fastest qualified with the 59.95, in front with about one and a quarter laps remaining. Curious thing is what happened to Martin Sinclair because he was leading comfortably and then all of a sudden the drama back in the field and he disappeared as well. Gee, the Mazda gets very close to the back of the Commodore through the pit corner. One lap now remaining. There's Springer in third place and a long, long way back in fourth is Kerry Bailey in the Tirana. To the Brambles hairpin again, Leon Burden. Mazda very close through here but loses out on the, uh, the horsepower run down to Coca-Cola corner. Coming up behind car 41, <laughs> Andrew Farr. <laughs> Excuse me, boys. OK, four stays out of the way. And away goes Leon Burden again down to the, uh, the Goodyear sweeper. Greg Crick has lost out in, uh, in that run. And, of course, Matthew Springer and the Tirana still in third. I don't think those positions are going to chase. It just depends uh, entirely of how close uh, Crick can get the tail of the Commodore as they enter the last part of this lap. It's a little closer this time, coming up once again towards Besson Corner, down to the uh, hump at Mazda. This could be interesting. How close does he need to be? Come through the turn, and Leon Burden. Mazda switches the inside springer in, a bit of stride back behind him, but Burden will go on the winner. And does quite nicely from Crick. And Matthew Springer getting up there to finish in third. Well, a very interesting race, a race of changing fortunes.